G'day, I'm Warwick Schiller and recently on my social media I've been sharing the fact that I have been following a guy named Wim Hof for a while. So Wim Hof's called the Iceman, he holds the world record for the longest under ice swim, he holds the world's record for the longest ice bath. And so what I've been doing for quite a while now is taking cold showers. It's now the beginning of May, I've been taking cold showers since middle of January. And uh, I actually got to go to a one day Wim Hof seminar to where we got in an ice bath. At the end of the seminar we got to get in an ice bath. And then recently I went to uh, Utah to visit a friend of mine who trains horses and on the way to his place, he's at about 7,000 feet, and on the way to his place I, uh, there were some snow banks, on, you know we don't have snow in California, there were snow banks beside the road so I jumped out, took my shirt off and lay in the snow bank. And uh, when I got to his place, I was telling him about it, and he said, well, up the road here is a, uh, five miles up the road is an ice-covered lake. You want to get in that tomorrow? So I said, sure. So we actually did. I've never seen an ice-covered lake before, but we went up there the next day and actually got in for two minutes in this, in this ice-covered lake. And everybody that I tell about doing the, the cold showers and stuff, people are like, you're crazy. Why would you want to do that? And... One of the reasons I do that is because it is a mental struggle to have that cold shower every day. You've really got to have a bit of a talk to yourself. And so, you know, there's a saying, you should do something that scares you just a little bit every day. So the cold shower is one of mine. But the other thing about the cold showers is there's a, there's a saying, I think it's a Buddhist saying, that there's a difference between pain and suffering. And pain is pain and suffering is rejection of that you know uh, non-acceptance is what they talk about and uh, I've found that when you have a cold shower if you're rejecting like I don't want to be in here I don't want to be in here it is painful the whole time whereas if you can just accept it while you're in there it's uh, it's not near as much of a problem and so my horse Bundy he's a cribber Okay, so when he was young, he broke his P2 and had P2 bone and had his uh, had it plated and screwed and had his P2 and P1 infused, and had to spend six months in a stall with a cast on. He couldn't even come out to be hand walked, and he's a very active-minded fella. So he kind of got bored in there and learned how to crib. And to this day, he's, he's seven years old now, and he still cribs. If you tie him up somewhere while you're saddling, he will crib. Now, for the longest time, that crib drove that cribbing drove me crazy. Okay, like I didn't want him to do it, but I've looked, I've since seen research to where cribbing you know you used, people used to think that cribbing caused colic things like that well apparently it doesn't and you are actually better off letting them crib it's less it's a coping mechanism and it's less stressful for them to crib than it is for you to interrupt that and stop them cribbing so you know so the i used to suffer because bundy cribbed because it drove me nuts now i just accept it and it doesn't really bother me anymore in Temple Grandin's book, Animals in Translation, she talks about how horses or animals don't feel pain the same way, way we do. And what I'm talking about here is exactly what she's referring to in there, that a, an animal only feels pain, whereas what we tend to do is we attach a story to that pain, and that gives us what we call suffering. You know, my son is a just really got into rock climbing recently and on spring break he went to Tucson, Arizona to a place called Cochise's Stronghold to do a week-long rock climbing course and the second day he was there he was hanging off a rock and he swung to get another grip and dislocated his shoulder and they had to lower him to the ground and a dislocated shoulder is quite painful but we were talking about it the other day and he was you know I said I bet on the way down you were thinking about oh god you know it's I've taken a week off school to come here and now I've dislocated my shoulder and I won't be able to climb for the rest of the week and he's, he was nodding like, yeah. And so that's the difference between pain and suffering. The pain he was feeling in his shoulders, the pain, but then that was making him trigger all these other thoughts in his head about different scenarios and, and, and you know, stories attached to that pain. So anyway, the big thing is the reason I can do the ice bar things and they're not too bad these days is because I accept the cold instead of reject the cold and as psychologist Carl Jung says what you resist persists